Yeah It's Moss Music And this is 211, nigga Fucker What up, though? OG Kenny O underscore G underscore Kenny Retired from the streets TV You know it's Church Crime Sunday I promised y'all last week with the first installment of Church Crime Sunday when I did the story <clears throat> of Maurice Cooper, the Walmart worker who was accused of being not just a pastor, but also a pimp and a rapist, a booty bandit. This week, we we, we back on church crimes, but we focusing a little different. And I'm going to take y'all back a few years to March the 30th of 2018. So March the 30th of 2018, um, a brother at the, who was at the time 44 years old, whose name was Cedric Preacher Man Maynard, was sentenced to 10 years in prison for conspiracy with intent to distribute crack cocaine and cocaine and the felon in possession of a weapons charge, right? What the um, news reports and whatnot was saying that um, in 2017, the brother was found guilty. Um, August 2017, he was found guilty of the crimes. He was a pastor at New Beginners International um, Outreach Ministry, which is in uh, Rincon, Georgia. And they were alleging that he was part of a major drug trafficking operation that, and he stored and sold drugs at his place of residency in Rincon. And they even alleged that he had his son involved in the distribution of these drugs. So, they issued a search. They got a search warrant, right? Because I guess you know how I go with, with the feds. Usually they got somebody either telling them something or if somebody slipped up along the way and they start watching them. Usually it's a snitch involved, right? When they raided the when they raided this brother's house, they say that um he had um next to the Bible on his nightstand. Brother, I can hear your zipper. Oh, yo, can we're gonna fight. My fuck. I'm gonna fight this man. I'm gonna have to edit this out. You zipping and crackling. I ain't know uh, that that that, that close. Yes, sir. You done got deep with it, huh? Yes. You hear a zipper. Yes. Okay. My so, fault. So now I'm about to finish where I was at. On the nightstand next to his um bed, next to the Bible, they said the brother had a semi-automatic nine millimeter weapon. Or I ain't even said nine millimeter weapon. I'm gonna say a semi-auto because I don't think they specified it. But next to his robe, his preacher robe now. He had a Tech 9 with an extended clip that held 15 rounds. Crazy, right? It's the preacher, though. Right? Now, I ain't mad that you feel a street dude and you out there and you and you shaking the bag you need it. <laughs> and I guess when you're a, you a preacher and you're shaking the bag, you need it too. But I, I would think that as a man of the cloth and as a prior felon, right, that you would take that right there serious because... It, you would think they would come down harder on a guy once he faked the cloth, right? You up there acting like you the preacher man and whatnot. You propagating to the people and you giving them the word, but you can also get a half a bird from me at the service. That's a little strange, right? So I ain't judging the brother for his actions as far as shaking the bag because I know plenty of people to do it, right? And I got a lot of friends and family members that have done it and still do it, you know. Needless to say, I ain't gonna never mention them, but when you put that cloth on, it's almost like playing with God, and that's a little weird for me. That's the part I'm saying is weird. Now, upon executing this search warrant, now this is a search warrant, and it's a collaboration between the Chatham County Narcotics Team, what they call CNT, and the Savannah Chatham SWAT Team. So they came heavy. Whenever you got a narcotics team, that they are already big, right? And you got to pull in a SWAT team, they didn't get reports that you probably heavily armed. And when they get in the residence, besides those two guns I previously mentioned, they found weapons all over the house. They found narcotic um, tra trafficking, paraphernalia and whatnot. They found scales. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read y'all in a little, a little more detail as far as what they found. Right. Okay, let's go here. In 2017, Chatham County Narcotics Team, CNT, um, agents, along with the Savannah Chatham SWAT Team, executed a search warrant at Maynard's residence in Rankin. Agents seized marijuana, methamphetamine, that's, the, that's what we knocking all your teeth out, prescription medication, drug scales, drug manufacturing and distribution tools, heat sealing machines, baggies, beakers, body armor, cash, 
20 firearms, AR style magazines, and hundreds of rounds of ammunition. Preacher, man, preacher, man. Preacher man wasn't bullshitting, y'all. He's ready to go. He wasn't going. If it went down and it was his back against the wall, he wasn't going. I'm not going neither, so I don't blame him, but he was not going. It's crazy, though, because when I'm reading this story and I'm looking it up and I'm like, damn, this is deep because it sounds like something out of a movie, right? You watch the movies with Quentin Tarantino directing and whatnot. You got a, a, a preacher who used to be in the streets when the gang gave his life, to, got his life together, but he go and dust off the closet or dust off the old dresser and pull out all these guns that you ain't never heard of. That's what this sound like. It's a wild story. They gave this brother 10 years and that sound like love. Cause let me tell you, they said, of course he was a prior felon, but they say that um, he had six prior felony convictions coming from or stemming from six different occasions. So that's six different crimes, six different convictions. So he blessed because as you know, at least in Michigan, and I'm pretty sure it's like that anywhere else, those federal sentencing guidelines trickle down to the state level so that when they're considering how much time to give you, they're considering all your statistical risk factors, your prior convictions, your institutional records, your um, any, if, um anything that you've done as far as your first conviction on up follows you and they consider everything when they convict you. So 10 years in a federal institution, is beautiful. I'm pouring release. He's going to have to do three years of supervision. So a supervised release because, as you know, the federal um, government, when they sentence you, they don't give you parole like they do in the States. Um, it's deep. This is another example of somebody, for real, for real, who could have ran the bag up legally as a preacher. I mean, I'm not, I don't know how much preachers get paid. I don't know how they tax that, how they allow to give themselves income when it comes to having religious charters and whatever go, goes on with that. But I, like I've mentioned before, I know plenty of pastors who doing God's work, working with the community are resources for food, health, information, family, um, therapy and whatnot. So they deserve to ride a Bentley. They deserve to have a bag attached to their name and a legacy. Look at T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes has dropped seven movies with Lifetime Movie Network, each one of them dedicated or named after one of the Sedley Devon sins, right? He running, him and Potter House running their bag up legally as a church and as a, 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 um, a ministry and an outreach. Needless to say, T.D. Jakes is an excellent example of how you can run your bag up and still get the full blessings of God without being the slime ball and the minister at the same time. I ain't judging this man's character, but the evidence speaks for itself. And I'm a street dude, so it ain't like I'm putting nobody out there. But, you know, you done been popped, bro. It's like, damn, hopefully doing this 10-year bid. And you got to think that was 2018, so he down four already. And he got but like six or so more to go. And if it, he got a good programming. I don't know how them programs work in there, but if he got into some programs, I think they shorten the time for them dudes. So, you know, with all due respect to the brother, man, I hope, like, you come home and, and become prosperous and got your life right. And this time around, when you step into God's arena and you step into God's land and his territory, you do the right thing. You feel me? Hopefully you do the right thing this time and you find some peace of mind. This has been another. It's the second one. I'm going to keep them coming. Huh? Church Crime Sunday. OG Kenny, O underscore G underscore Kenny, every time from the streets. TV, loved ones. Y'all have a safe Sunday. Happy Mother's Day to everybody that tuned in. We barbecuing right now. I wish y'all could smell it. It's a nice day in Detroit. We barbecuing. Chicken is on the grill as we speak. Y'all be safe. Enjoy. Kiss your mothers and love them and appreciate them while they're here because you only get one. I'm out. <laughs>